Hi, I'm Norm Gruber, Chief Executive Officer of Salem Hospital. Our mission is to improve the health and well-being of the people and communities we serve. A recent published study concluded that this use of a simple surgical checklist during major operations significantly lowers the incidence of surgically related deaths and complications. At Salem Hospital, we take patient care seriously and have implemented the use of the WHO surgical checklist for all surgical procedures taking place within our institution. The operating room is a complex environment. Many things need to happen to ensure the right patient gets the right operation and that all of the equipment, staff, and supplies are readily available for a smooth procedure without delay. This requires excellent teamwork and communication among the physicians and staff making up the OR team. Use of the surgical checklist ensures that the steps to promote safe surgery are implemented in a systematic and timely fashion. In 2009, the World Health Organization, or WHO, published results that demonstrated that the use of a surgical safety checklist was associated with significant reductions in post-surgical complications and deaths, even in those U.S. hospitals that had already implemented most of the patient safety elements prior to the use of the checklist. The checklist promotes consistency and safety for patients and fosters a culture that values achieving it. The Institute for Healthcare Improvement, IHI, the American Society of Anesthesiologists and the Association of Operating Room Nurses are encouraging the use of the WHO Surgical Safety Checklist every time a surgical procedure is performed. There are three segments to the checklist. The first one is done just prior to the induction of anesthesia. The pre-induction timeout assures that the OR team and patient are completely ready for proceeding with the operation. Key elements to promote safe surgery are covered, starting with correct patient identification and site marking for the procedure the patient has consented for. Other key elements include having critical patient information posted on a whiteboard, verification of patient allergies, and confirmation of receipt of prophylactic antibiotics and VTE measures. Other pre-op orders are addressed for readiness, including Foley catheter and availability of imaging and blood products specific to this procedure. The anesthesiologist confirms the readiness of monitors and suction and identifies the airway risk and ASA score. Are you ready for our pre-induction timeout, Dr. Henderson? I am. Okay, I have Nancy Dunn. Her medical record number is 123456. And that information is on the whiteboard and it's correct. We're going to be doing a left video-assisted thoracoscopy. She's not allergic to any medication. She had ANCEF, 2 grams. Her type and screen has been done, her SCDs are on, no Foley is necessary, and her CT scans are available on EyeSight. Does she uh, have any special needs or requirements? I will be using a double little tube. I have all my equipment available and I don't foresee any problems. Okay, and are your monitors working properly and do you have suction? All my monitors are on and working and I do have suction available and she is an ASA class 2. All right. All right. Nancy, I'm going to have you breathe some oxygen before you fall asleep. I want you to pick out a nice dream, okay? The surgeon-led timeout occurs just prior to incision. The surgeon reiterates the proper identification of patient's site, procedure, and consent. There is then a checkoff of all the previously confirmed key elements for safe surgery such as allergies, antibiotic administration, and blood availability. The surgeon confirms what is anticipated for the surgery and invites all team members to state their name and readiness for their role in the surgery. A final safety statement supports a culture of teamwork and communication for excellence in patient safety and care. Is everyone ready for the surgical timeout? Yes, yes. ma'am. I'm Dr. Vander Hayden and this is Nancy Dunn. And I'm Suzanne and her medical doctor number 123456 has been confirmed and matches our armband. I will be performing a left video assisted thoracoscopy today for empyema. I'm anticipating this to be a routine case. It does say left video assisted thoracoscopy on the consent and is signed by the patient. I have side marked the patient here on the left side and her positioning is correct. And she has received her two grams of ANSEP within the one hour time limit and she has no allergies. The uh, imaging displayed is correct. I'm anticipating a blood loss of approximately 100 mLs, and my equipment is ready. Okay. I would like everyone at this time to introduce themselves and indicate whether or not they are ready. I'm Suzanne, and I am confirmed that the patient's name and MRN agree with the consent, and I am ready. My name is Joe. I'm your scrub nurse. I have all your instrumentation, and I am ready. I'm Dr. Anderson. The patient is under a general anesthetic with a double lumen tube. I'm ready to go. 
Thank you. And I want to encourage everyone to speak up if they have any concerns. Are there any questions before we start the procedure? None for me. No, ma'am. I'm good, Deb. Thank you. At the completion of the surgical procedure, there are a series of elements that are summarized among all team members to assure the optimal post-op recovery for the patient. After confirming the name of the procedure, sponge and needle counts are verified and the correct labeling of specimens is reviewed. The EBL and wound class is recorded and any equipment issues or preference card revisions are discussed. All team members are asked to articulate any concerns for the post-op management of this patient and hand off communication to the PACU team. Dr. Vanderhagen, I'd like to confirm the procedure with you. Yes, this was a left video assisted thoracoscopy. Okay, your sponge and needle count was correct. I sent a specimen left pleural fluid for routine culture and sensitivity. Is that correct? Yes, it is. All right, our EBL was how much? 100 ml. Okay, and our class wound classification? This was a class 4 infected wound. Okay. Did we have any uh, equipment problems? Uh, no, we didn't. Okay. You want any changes to your purpose card? No, I don't. Do you have any concerns for PACU? I will need a chest x-ray and PACU, but otherwise I have no concerns. Okay, Dr. Anderson, how about you? Anything special for PACU? No concerns. Okay, I'll call PACU and let them know we're on our way. Okay, thank you, everyone.